Today we've got a crazy story of revenge, stealing something from somebody's ex-boss's wife. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, boss stole my girlfriend, so I got him arrested. I've never been the one to take the low road. I was the type of guy that liked to choose peace every time. I always try to find a better way to settle an argument whenever one arises. During my time in high school, I never got into a verbal altercation with anyone, not to talk of a physical one, even though sometimes it meant I had to give up my lunch money or a slice of my mom's famous blueberry pie. I didn't do these things because I was weak or I couldn't stand up for myself. I mean, yeah, I was 5 foot 6 in high school and most of the guys were taller than me, but unknown to everyone, I knew jujitsu and if anyone actually tried to get physical with me, I could bring them down with only a few moves. The only reason why I didn't do that was I didn't like to get in my way using force. I hated the fact that some people preferred to inspire fear instead of love and respect, so I decided to do the exact opposite. This ideology worked for me from high school to college and even after, but eventually my journey on the high road ended when my boss at the firm where I worked as the cybersecurity specialist decided to steal my girl. I did something I wasn't proud of but was necessary to put him in his place. But before I go into detail, let's start with my relationship with my girlfriend Susan. I met Susan on one rainy night in my third year of college. I had just finished a 25 page assignment and all I wanted to do at the time was eat some pizza and go to bed. But my roommate Greg, he had other plans. He came into the apartment just as I was about to have a second slice of pizza. He told me to get a shower because we were going to party. Party? In the middle of a school semester? That sounded ridiculous, but then so was Greg. I told him I wasn't interested because I was too tired to leave the house. Besides, it was going to rain that night. We had been seeing the signs all morning, and the weatherman had confirmed the fact that it was going to rain later that night. Till today, I still don't know how Greg managed to convince me that going out was a good idea because less than an hour later, I was on the other side of town attending a party in the apartment of someone I don't know. A few minutes later, I took my beer and went out to the hallway. I needed a fresh breath of air and a break from all the noise. I walked over to the balcony to just chill and take in the nightlife from that part of the city. The cold breeze was picking up and I was sure the rain was going to start anytime soon. A few moments later, as I sipped my beer, I noticed someone walk up beside me, beer in hand. I turned to look at the person. It was a girl. A really pretty girl too. I wanted to smile politely and get back to my drink, but instead I said hi and I told her my name. I was already giving myself a mental knock on the head when she smiled at me and told me her name, Susan. Susan and I started to talk like we'd known each other for years. And even though we'd just met a few minutes ago, it didn't feel weird when I asked her if she'd want to go out the next day. She said yes and we exchanged contacts. We couldn't stay out on the balcony anymore because at that time, the rain had just started to fall. So we went back into the apartment and she got distracted by her friends. I left the party less than an hour later. Greg had gotten crap drunk and he needed to crash, so I drove him home. The next day was a Saturday, so I texted Susan, and we agreed to meet at a cinema. After the movie, we decided to grab lunch. We chatted over burgers and fries, and when I checked my phone later, it was late. We had spent hours talking. It didn't come as a surprise to me because Susan was a really interesting person. Smart, funny, and ridiculously beautiful too. Even if we weren't talking, I could spend hours just staring at her face. Anyways, we decided to leave the restaurant and Susan took a cab home. I wanted to walk her home, but she said her place was quite far. I wouldn't have minded. Susan and I started to hang out more often, and by the end of my third year, the second semester, she agreed to be my girlfriend. Susan was a lit major while I was studying cybersecurity. During our fourth and final year, we did everything together. Studied, watched movies, ate, slept, we were inseparable. Eventually we graduated, and I had to move out of the apartment I shared with Greg. Susan and I decided to rent an apartment together. By this time, Susan had just gotten started on her blog, and I was sending out applications to various firms. I was expecting to start my career from the lowest step, which was an internship, but amongst all of the replies I got, there was one that stood out to me. It was a large company with subsidiaries all around the state. 
They seemed to be understaffed at that moment, so they offered me the full-time job immediately. I was really happy with this development that I took Susan out to celebrate that night. I started the job a few days after, and boy, it was way more stressful than I thought. The fact that the IT department was understaffed made it all the more overwhelming. I was doing a job meant for three people, and because of this, I resumed work early and closed really late. Susan and I started to see less and less, and at first, she tried to be supportive, but as the months rolled in, she started to complain. She hated the fact that she had to be home alone all day and night, and even during the weekends, when I was supposed to get some free time, the head of the IT department, Trey, still calls me in. Every time we have that fight, I always tell her I was going to make more time to spend with her, but at that moment, I needed to focus on my job. I shouldn't have told her that, it sounded like a breakup. Anyways, my major issue with Susan revolves around the fact that there was never enough time to spend with her. Every person was supposed to find a work-life balance, but me, I never found that balance. And because of that, our relationship suffered. One day, the company decided to throw a Friday night party to celebrate the coming holidays, so I invited my girlfriend Susan. She didn't want to come at first, but after I pleaded and promised that it wouldn't turn into a work night for me, she agreed to come with me. We got to the party by 8, and after a glass of champagne, I introduced her to some of my colleagues in IT. After a speech from one of the department heads, we were able to sneak away to the hallway. There, we had a long talk, and I finally started to realize how absent I've been in her life. But just when I was about to apologize about everything... Trey, the head of IT, came to fetch me. They needed my attention with something work-related. I could see that Susan was mad, but at that moment there was nothing I could do. I said I was sorry and I'll be back soon, but I didn't come back for the next one hour. One of the servers had failed to reboot and I needed to do a quick check. When I was done, I went back to the party, but I couldn't find Susan. She wasn't in the hallway where I left her. She wasn't in the crowd either. I started to ask around and eventually someone spotted her going to the balcony. I hurried to the balcony and to my utmost surprise, Susan was there and she wasn't alone. She was with Danny, the head of the firm's sales department. Danny was the youngest head of the department working in the firm. He was very smart, talented in business and an overall likable person. I would have liked him too if not for the fact that he was also a huge jerk that uses all of his good qualities for the sole purpose of womanizing. Seriously, Danny can't go a full day without flirting with one of the female workers in the firm. And because he's cute and really charming, nobody seems to notice his bad habits or have a problem with it. I took a few deep breaths to cool off my anger, then I walked up to them. Susan was in a better mood than I'd left her, and while I was happy about that, it still annoyed the heck out of me, because it meant that she'd been talking to Danny for some time. I put my arm around Susan's neck and deliberately kissed her cheek to show Danny that she was taken, but Danny didn't look surprised. He took out a stick-it note from his pocket which had his number on it, then he passed it to Susan. I was so pissed off. How dare he disrespect me so? And not only that, Susan collected the number, and I expected her to do me the courtesy of tearing the paper apart right in front of me, but she didn't. When I asked her about it, all she said was that it was fine and she wasn't planning on calling or anything. Another fight started, and it ended with her saying she was going to dispose of the paper. But a few days later, I found out that she didn't. When I confronted her about it, she said it was fine and they were just friends. I know Susan can be headstrong sometimes, and whenever she wanted to do something, there was no stopping her. So I didn't bother to waste my time trying. I took a different approach. I went to the sales department the next day at work, then went to Danny's office. I told him at once to stop texting my girlfriend. All he did was smirk, then he told me to tell her not to text him again, because if she kept texting, there was no way he was going to stop. At that point, I was so pissed off, I couldn't speak. What the heck is his problem? Of all the girls falling head over heels for him, why would he decide to go after mine? There wasn't much I could do, and since I couldn't get through to any of them to stop texting the other, they continued. I knew in my heart that something was going to go wrong, and I was going to lose Susan. What I didn't know was how quickly that was going to happen. 
Just one month after I took Susan to the work party, I came home from work, and as usual, Susan was pissed at me for coming home late. As usual, I said I was sorry and that I was going to do better, but this time she didn't listen. She said she was tired of running in circles and I obviously loved my job more than her. Before I could say anything, she went upstairs and came down with all of her stuff and she left the house. It really saddened my heart to see her go, but what broke my heart the most was the fact that I knew Susan would never have left me on her own accord. She was still talking to Danny who obviously wanted her. I didn't speak about it though since I didn't have proof. The days rolled into weeks and weeks into months and eventually I got my proof. I went out for a run one Sunday afternoon and so I decided to grab a bite from a small burger shack in one part of the city I never really visited. I turned my gaze to the side instinctively and I saw Susan. She was walking down the street and holding hands with none other than Danny. And they were being all lovey-dovey with each other. At that point, I wasn't mad at Susan. She did what she had to do to be happy, and I respected that. But Danny? Stealing a co-worker's girlfriend? That's low, and I knew I had to teach him a lesson. I wanted him to feel the sense of loss and helplessness I felt, so I had to abandon all my rules about being the bigger person. The next day, I started to gather information about him. Personal information, passwords, emails, everything. Before the end of the two weeks, I had gotten everything I needed. I had recently heard that the sales department were losing money and they had to hire auditors to look into their books to find out where. That was how I was going to hit him. So the next few days, I hacked into the company's official account. Then I siphoned some money into an offshore account that I set up in his name. Next, I made some transfers from the offshore account into Danny's personal account. That's all I needed to do. Danny must have seen the credit in his bank account, but he would have been too confused to know what was going on. The auditors traced the money I sent into the offshore account, and they reported their findings to the CEO. My ruse was believable, because he, along with a few people, had access to the company account. The CEO didn't waste any time after they gave him their findings. He called the police, and I watched as they came into the office and walked over to the sales department. A few moments later, they walked Danny out in handcuffs while he was shouting, I didn't do it, I don't know anything about this. That was the last time I saw Danny, and yeah, although I wasn't proud of how I got rid of him, I was okay with the outcome, because he deserved it. Susan and I didn't get back together though, but at least Danny won't be getting her wherever he was going, and that's good enough for me. In a way, it's kind of revenge against both Danny and their ex, because their ex was clearly in some kind of relationship with Danny and OP forcefully broke that up. Our next story is, I stole expensive artwork from my ex boss's wife. I had worked for my employer for four years before he got divorced from his ex-wife and had a stroke. I started working for the family when I was 17. I was the family's babysitter. My boss's ex-wife had two children who were at the time six and four, and since the couple went out a lot, my boss was a rich businessman and they attended many functions together, he needed someone to babysit his stepchildren. At the time, I had just signed up at an agency to get jobs as a domestic staff. When my boss reached out to my agency, he asked for a sitter. The lady who owned the agency only had staff who did the cleaning, gardening, and the like, but she didn't want to miss the opportunity to be of service to such an affluent family. I heard her talking about it one day in her office and offered to step in immediately. I had done many babysitting jobs when I was 16, and I had three siblings who were a lot younger, so I did a lot of babysitting growing up. I also needed the money, so there was that. My agent agreed, and I was sent to their home for an interview. My boss was very friendly. He invited me in and offered me some juice and water. I can tell that you're thirsty, he said. I smiled and thanked him. He was a very tall man with the finest well-trimmed gray beard and he was in his 60s. I'd read about him in the local papers and from what I gathered, he'd been married thrice before the woman he was married to at the time. They said he was a very unfaithful man and his infidelity was so constant and recurring that his ex-wives could not handle it. He had children with his first wife whom he married when he was in his late 20s but they were all adults and had a turbulent relationship with their father. 
He didn't have any children with the other women he married, and the woman and mother of two he was married to at the time was 30 years younger than him. The interview went well. I was quite nervous and intimidated by the magnificent house, but I try to keep that all under my control. To be frank, we're looking for someone with a little more long-term experience, he said after the interview, but we will call you if we decide that you're a better fit than the others. I went back home very depleted. I'd looked forward to moving in with the family and having a more stable job. I also looked forward to leaving my family's home. It was exhausting living in a house that small. I shared a room with my two little sisters and sharing a bathroom with everyone in the house had gotten too tedious for me. My mom's constant nagging and the crime rate in the area. It was all too exhausting and I wanted out. That night, when my mom asked how the interview went, I lied that it went okay and that I was confident about getting the job. The truth was I hoped that by saying that it would somehow make it true. I needed a job badly and I'd already pictured my life working for the family. About two weeks later, my boss's assistant called me to see if I could come over to watch the kids while they went to an evening function. I accepted the job and was paid heavily for it. I was surprised at how generous they were compared to the other families I'd worked for. For a month, that became the routine. They would call me to watch the children and I'd hurried over to do that. The children soon grew to love me and I made sure of that and I was good with children anyway. Their eyes lit up whenever I came around. My boss's ex-wife asked me one day when I was just about to leave their house if I would stay, be their live-in sitter. I agreed, and she asked me to resume my new job the week after. I went home happy that evening. I'm not ashamed to admit that I was more excited about having access to good food than I was about anything else. Anyway, I returned to the house the week after. The children were great and I had so much fun and was very fulfilled. However, my happiness and peace in that home ended after almost two years. I had always thought that as a staff, whatever internal marital issues happening in the house were not my business and could not affect me in any way, but I was wrong. My boss's wife started complaining about his sneaky behavior. They had big issues and argued all the time. I know there's someone else, she would rant to me. I know it and I swear, I'd leave him if I find out he's been cheating. Some days before Christmas one year, her sister came to their home and stayed in one of the guest rooms. She soon left because my boss would not let her be and kept pestering her to hook up. I had seen my boss try to kiss her one day when she was out by the poolside, but I kept it to myself. The sister soon got tired of his advances and moved out. I don't think she told her sister what was going on until she moved out. My boss's ex-wife returned home from the mall one day and ran up the stairs to attack her husband. Her sister had told her that her husband tried to get her to sleep with him. His ex-wife was so upset that she almost bit his ears off. My boss's assistant had to pull her away from him. My boss was angry about the attack. You know, I could have you arrested for this, he kept yelling. His ex-wife kept trying to attack him and would have succeeded had his assistant not held her away. Months later, my boss was seen many times in public with a 27-year-old woman. He was obviously cheating again. His ex-wife was miserable and so were her children. She couldn't leave him because she would get nothing since they hadn't even been married for up to five years. She confided in me about her plans to wait it out and get a divorce after five years. It, however, became very humiliating for her. She could no longer handle his infidelity, so she filed for a divorce. Surprisingly, my boss was desperate to make her stay. He apologized many times, bought her gifts, bought gifts for the children, and even had a huge party on her birthday with her favorite artist there to sing her a birthday song. Things went back to normal for some months, until my boss's ex-wife caught him in a hotel with the woman he'd been pictured with. She decided she was done and moved out of the house that week. I don't care if I get a pin out of this marriage, I'd rather be by myself than be married to someone very serious about humiliating me, she told me while I helped them pack. Since my job there was over, I started having panic attacks. I didn't want to be unemployed again. I was worried about it. My parents lived from hand to mouth and I'd help them with my siblings so they could all go to college and not end up like me. I was employed to take care of the children, but when my boss's ex left with the kids, I knew my days were numbered in the house. 
I, however, waited for my boss to tell me I had to leave. After the divorce, he hardly spent time in the house. One day, he came in and met me at the door. I asked him about my job. Stay, please, he said. Things are changing too fast in this house anyway. You could manage the house. I was glad to have been given a new job description and went about discharging my new duties. In no time, the 27-year-old my boss had been cheating on his ex-wife was with us. She was mean and extremely rude to the staff. We all hated her for how she treated us, but since I lived in the house, I got more bad treatment. When my boss announced that they were getting married, we were so mad about it that we had a conversation about how to see if we could ruin their engagement. They had an engagement party and waited until his divorce from his ex-wife was finalized before they finally got married. Their wedding was in a different country, and we dreaded what she would be like when she returned. Surprisingly, she was not as bad as she was when she first moved in. I had no issues with her, except that she wanted me to do everything for her. It was tiring constantly having to wait on her hand and foot. As weeks passed, my boss looked tired and weak. He could barely even walk right anymore. One day he was in the office, heading a meeting, when he fell and had a stroke. He was taken to the hospital where he stayed for a week and returned after. His new wife employed two new staff. One was to take care of her husband, and the other was to clean the house, alongside the cleaner we already had. As I had been doing, I was to supervise these people. My boss's situation got worse instead of better. He became a shadow of himself. The once tall, fine, older gentleman soon became someone who pooped and vomited on himself. He was a lot leaner, and I heard his assistant tell his wife once that he didn't think my boss had much time to live. His children visited frequently, and the coldness between them and their stepmom was glaring. A month after the unfortunate incident, my boss's wife called us to share new information with us. She wanted us to know that she couldn't pay us temporarily because my boss's money was tied up in litigation. His children had pulled strings and she had no access to any money to pay us. She assured us, however, that she would start paying and pay in arrears too as soon as the court ruled in her favor. We do need money to take care of my husband, so there's no way they would win this case. She encouraged those of us who could not stay to leave and promised a huge reward for whoever stayed. Only one staff member left. The month after, however, the two other staff she employed left too. We all didn't know how long their money was going to be tied up in litigation. They had mouths to feed, so they left. I stayed though because I'd worked there for so long and felt a sort of loyalty to my boss. Even though my boss was a crappy husband, he was a good boss to me. He paid me promptly and provided all sorts of bonuses. Sometimes he just gave me and the other staff cash gifts for no reason at all. I didn't think it was proper to just get up and leave the family in their trying times because my boss was ill. I genuinely believed his new wife had everything under control and would reimburse me in no time. I looked forward to getting my reward for being a loyal and dutiful staff. My boss went from being physically incapable of doing stuff to losing his mind too. He could barely tell who was who and would call his wife by his daughter's name. Since there was barely anyone left to do the stuff that needed to be done, I did all the cleaning and took care of my boss. I genuinely thought my boss's wife had everything sorted. And she did. Just not in the way I had expected. One day, my boss's daughter, who was the oldest, came in with someone else. I excused them so she could talk to her dad. On my way out, I heard his daughter say something about leaving the gold digger with nothing. I immediately figured they were talking about my boss's wife, so I stayed behind the door to eavesdrop. I listened to them but could barely hear what they were talking about. I did hear them talk about selling the house and the court's decision though. As his daughter and her company left the house, I stopped to ask her when the court's case was going to be concluded. What do you mean? The courts delivered judgment last week, she said, looking at me weirdly. I felt betrayed. I honestly trusted my boss's wife to let me know when the litigation was over and what the outcome was. It was okay if the court didn't rule in her favor, but I deserved to know since I was working for free. That night I saw her sneak into the house. She tiptoed and looked around suspiciously. I turned on a light bulb and she stopped. She was wearing a gold dress and was returning from a party. 
I immediately confronted her about what had happened. Yeah? Well? I said, well, when were you going to tell us? Tell me. She says, listen, we're trying to save ourselves here. That old man could die any time from now. I'm sure he was generous to you before he was ill. Maybe make do with that. I was angry. It wasn't until then that it occurred to me that she probably knew she was going to lose the litigation. She wanted someone to take care of her husband and do the heavy lifting while she found a way to make some money off her marriage to him. People soon started coming into the house to make offers on it. My boss's daughter came and took him with her. The court gave her the conservatorship of her dad, but his wife got to stay in the house until he died and his will was read. She couldn't sell the house, so she had to stay in it and sell whatever she could. I knew she would try to take the expensive paintings and artwork, and I was right. I noticed she took some of the expensive ones into the storage room. Since my boss was out of the house and I wasn't getting paid, I decided to leave. But not without getting back at my boss's wife. One night, I arranged with my cousin to come over in his car. I put the artwork and paintings in his car and ordered him to save them in his home until I decided what to do with them. He took it in and left, and since there was no other staff in the building, nobody saw us. The next morning I packed my things and left. My boss's wife called me and threatened to call the police, but I laughed and told her to go ahead. I also threatened to tell everyone what she did. She hung up and never called again. I don't know of anything she had done, but... I guess she did do something because she never called me again. I still wonder what she did. I'm sure there was probably a bunch of family heirlooms or expensive things and maybe his personal possessions that she was more than happy to grab up and ship out and sell for some quick cash too. Probably plenty of dirty laundry that she didn't want uncovered. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy story of revenge, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.